Hello, hello, hello. It's Fiona here. Dragon Channel, Dragon Queen. Um, if you're coming on, please say hi. If you're on replay, please say hi. This is all about your dragon's message to help you ascend over this next week. Usually there's a theme, there's something that's coming up. So um, I kind of tend to read into this over the weekend on the morning of the day I do these readings. And there is absolutely a theme. There's a cosmic conscious theme going on at the moment. So um, one of those things that they dragons definitely want me to mention today is about your identity. It's about um, how you maybe settle for less. So the, the title that they gave me today was Stop. Never, ever, ever settle for less than you deserve. So this is how you know when it's your time to move on, your time to when you really, really need to start making some changes. So this is what the cards are going to be all about for you this week. So um, normally we pick a card between one and four. Some people, you know, they want it two cards. But usually there's a theme along with all the cards that get chosen. There's a theme because it is all to do with this conscious consciousness message that is coming down and the time that we're in. We've just had a, a, a new moon, so we're in the time of new beginnings. And often this is like when we need to be looking at our identity. Who are we? How have we dumbed ourselves down? How are we not really going for gold? We're not shooting for the stars. We're just accepting whatever is um, on hand. So what I'm being asked to ask you at the moment, just as this prelude into this, do you really know yourself? Do you really know yourself deep down? Can you trust your own judgment? Can you make the right and the strongest decisions based on your own knowing and your own judgment, which comes in from inside? So if you're part of my group, Practical Magic, we do training every single week on how you can actually start getting this guidance for yourself. We can call in the dragons, we can get them to teach us. And then what I do is I feed back to you exactly how you get that done, how you feel for yourself. Oh, is this right for me or is this not right for me? And that was one of our trainings last week. Another training has also been how you step out of the way. So like many, many, many of us who've got businesses or careers or relationships and they're beginning to feel a little bit, hmm, I don't know, they're a bit dull. It's a bit suffocated. So, you know, how have we um put up with something and how have we settled for something when really all in all we're being asked to kind of the reason we get that feeling is kind of like uh, not quite it is it it's just not that's not it is what my soul often says to me it's like come on Fiona that's not it we're feeling a little bit dull here we're feeling a little bit stagnated a little bit suffocated and this is often where you get the feeling where you're holding your breath so when we're ascending the dragons come to wake you up doesn't matter whether you're already awake and you're already spiritual, you've already got your gifts, there's always more to be done on the ascension path. So this is what the dragons are all about, the awakening of the dragons. So, I mean, I spent years, decades, a lifetime falling into line and complying with who I thought I had to be, hiding away from the dragons, hiding away from my spiritual side. Um, and I was really lost until I did this. And I started speaking to the dragons. I started calling them in. Um, I was asking for conscious direction, for connection. Um, who am I? Why am I here? And even now you'll find me driving in the car, just kind of going, what is it that you want me to do? What am I here for? What's my real purpose? Has it shifted? Is it the same? I'm always in communication and asking. Um, so the reason I'm talking to you about this today, and hopefully this is going to come up in our cars, because this part of your identity this part of really who you are is like where have you settled where have you dumbed down your existence and um, why i've got the meditations that go up in my group and things on the on the content is to really help you understand and remember why you came here what are you here for so one of the main things that i've learned along the way that the dragons have shown me is that unbelievable <laughs> unapologetic love for yourself so do you know your own heart and soul do you know what makes you get up in the morning do you know what makes you tick do you know what makes you feel so alive um so really it's about finding that neutral place that sweet spot inside yourself where 
your guidance actually comes from. It doesn't come from your head, it doesn't come outside of you, it comes through you and up into your head so that you can start articulating it. So the connection is really, really imperative. And this is what this, the messages are going to be. I can't wait to see the cards. I've got one card in the back of my mind, I think. That's definitely the message for today. So, you know, do you know your own heart and soul? Can you really feel your true self for the maybe the first time ever and kind of go, oh, that's what, that's what I want. The second thing would be like, what feeds your heart and soul? The first thing would, do you know your own heart and soul? Getting into that sweet spot, that neutral place, coming home. The second bit would be, you know, do you know? <laughs> do you know where you're going to? <laughs> do you know where life is showing, showing you? Something like that. So what feeds your heart? What feeds your soul? Often we just don't know. So we have to make an inventory. What are the things that really light us up? What makes us feel 100% alive? The dragons are absolutely insistent that I talk about this. Normally I just go into reading the cards. And practice asking, saying out loud, you know how to do this, please show me how. Pay attention then to every single thing that comes in your path. Notice what you notice. So these are a lot of the messages that come through from the dragon cards. You're perfectly welcome to pick a dragon card every single week and do nothing with it. But if you want changes, if you want to feel better, if you want to ascend, if you want to be living in higher frequency, if you want more love in your life, if you want more clients in your life, if you want more money in your life, if you want more kids or living in a foreign country or just living a proper life, then really you need to start taking the messages that are coming through in these cards. Um, to continue your journey for soul assistance, pick a card, have your own deck of cards, or join one of my clubs, one of my Dragon the Dragon Portal, which is a year-long club, or Manifest with the Dragons, which is 12 months. All the content is there, and I meet you every single week, and I answer your questions. Um, just to get you really on board, and just all of this, knowing your heart and soul, knowing where your guidance comes from, knowing what's coming through. Can you imagine, if you're in business, just use that for an example. If you're in business, you say, I just, I don't know what platform I should be on. Where should I put my posts? What kind of posts should I write? Um, where are my clients? What are my clients like? What will they buy from me? All of this, all of this is what we uncover. When you have the questions, you will get the answers. And when you come into Manifest with the Dragons, because that's all about bringing your business down into earth, there is the most beautiful, powerful, he wants me to say unforgiving. <clears throat> he is called Obsidian. And Obsidian is the dragon that has an interview with you. And you will sit there and he will ask you questions. He will say, don't respond. Just sit and listen and give me your yes and your no's and your maybes and prove to me and verify it and tell me why it's so important to you. He's very, very straightforward. But I, goodness me, he gets right to the heart of the matter. He really shows you what you're here for, what your purpose is, and why you are the one that should be doing it, where your value actually sits. So before we carry on just talking about the wonderful, beautiful obsidian, and then I will at some point introduce you to Quan, which is <laughs> the money dragon, uh, how he, he helps you to manifest money. It's beautiful. Um, I'm going to pick out card number one. So these are the dragon cards. They're all dragon eyes. There's eight different eyes and each of them have eight different messages. So these are about how you move, how you ascend, how you go from survival, how you go into three, from 3D to 5D and all of that. So there's 64 cards here, eight, eight. So let's pull out card number one that's going to answer these questions about what's your step? What's your next step? So that you can actually work out exactly what you need to be doing this week. Oh, Serafina, you are awesome. So we're starting at the very beginning. We're starting at the very beginning with Serafina. Serafina was the first dragon that I met. Such a beautiful, beautiful dragon. So Serafina is the golden dragon. Serafina, this is card number one. And she wants you to know you don't know how powerful you are. When I first got these messages, I didn't know how powerful I was because I'd been manifesting things, but I didn't really realise what it is that I'd been doing. So listen to what she has to say to you and we will call in Serafina 
and we will listen to her potent advice and what we need to take action on. This is for you to know that you are a most powerful connector of potent, powerful, purposeful energy. It's pure potential for those who like you on the same trajectory, who want to be living as a conscious, creative being. This is an opportunity to tap in and become even more awakened and even more conscious. You are here on earth, connected to the sky and to the earth, connected as a powerful conductor of energy. This, your body, your flesh suit, your flesh and bones, you are a conductor of energy. You conduct and direct life force energy through your core as a conduit of the energy source. The power was once hidden and taken away from you as you were seen as a source of untamed power and are still that powerful being. You are like the trees on the planet. You feel energy and you produce a powerful current of energy and you can change your energy and cleanse your energy and use it for the good of all. Like the trees are rooted into the earth and the branches reach up to the sky with their trunk as a channel and the conduit for the energy between heavens and earth. You are no different from the trees, but you move and are like a charged, radiating, receiving battery. You have access to tremendous natural power through your own roots and practices. Your body is a conductor of energy, collecting information and feeding that back up into the heavens or down into the earth. You are like a transmitter. So down to the earth and then from the earth back up to the sky, you are the core and the conductor. Moving energy from the earth down to the, um, <laughs> bleh, moving energy from earth through your core and back up into the heavens and back up into the far, far galaxies of the universe, drawing into you everything that you want and are here to create through your mind's eye. Your power is incredible. It doesn't just mean that you're a conduit for the power, but what Serafina wants you to say now and re realize now is that you are a creator and that is your power. It's not that you can con um, th that you can conduct energy, which you can, but it's that you use that energy to create. How you feel that energy, how you live in that energy, the frequency of that energy. You can learn and practice how to direct this power and energetic charge to alter your own current reality and create for yourself a new reality. This power has been hidden from you human beings for too long. You once had free access to this natural power, but for certain reasons it was taken away from people. The energy was turned down. It was suppressed from you because some people were frightened of the people who had the power and it seemed Mm -hmm. too powerful and yes some people of course misuse this access to this energy but you have access to this power and those of you who are willing to get into this power and learn again how to wield this power it is available for you and there is nothing to be frightened of it is the mind that makes you frightened it is people around you that make you frightened of what you hear all the stories of the world and the community that you live in if you were able to just truly be comfortable in who you are, you would see and that you could wield this power already. Have fun with a light heart and you can play with it and you can create with it. You are a natural born creator. Just going to make a note of the numbers that we get up to today so that I can then put them back on the post. So I need a piece of paper. So number one, Serafina. Thank you, Serafina, for coming in. Card number one, powerful conductor of energy. Okay, let's see who we have as number two. Okay, let's just scrub that out for a little bit. And let's see what we have going on here. 
Okay. So we're going to pull out card number two. Whoop, there we go. So we've pulled out card number two in the Dragon Talks today. And this card, again, a golden dragon, but a different golden dragon like Sunshine. This is Utopia. This is the dragon of entering into 5D. She's the one that welcomes you into 5D. So you're out of survival mode. Her message number 59 is beyond love and what we know and have experienced as love. So this is card number two. So let me write that down. Number 59. So we've gone right from the beginning of the journey right to the end of the journey. So this is Utopia. So let's read now card number 59. Oh, just one card away. Okay. So number 59. Number 59. Beyond love and what you know and have ever experienced as love. So let's call in Utopia. Utopia is a very light hearted. She never lands on the earth ever again. She decided that she would not put her feet back on the ground in the same way again. She always just flies, rising above everything. So let's hear her voice. There is an expansion beyond love that you seek. A quest that is not necessary for the majority of the population to know. However, the more of the population have the ability to feel the frequency of love and are able to step more into this frequency of love, the faster the huge consequences can happen for the overall planet and the population's whole vibration. Your curiosity to experience and know what is beyond love is a feeling of mass expansion and a gentle connectedness to every single particle of the world connected and feeling the capacity to love everything and everyone. This is the state you might decide to call pure bliss. The feeling is being in an altered state of awe, in wonder, like a childlike state. Other adequate descriptive words of this flowing state that is beyond love would be enlightened, blissful, peaceful, in even an ecstatic state. There is a specific feeling that goes with this and lands in the human body and then it can feel quite heavy in its grounding and very filling and fulfilling and you reaching beyond your normal states and experiencing an expansion of your energy. The energy is one that is really difficult to contain. You can, it can be difficult to understand as you can't hold on to it, you can't touch it, but there is a sense and it soaks in and it can be experienced this feeling of bliss and feeling utopian. The experience of feeling pure bliss and love can be quite mind blowing if you're not used to it. As you enter into altered states, as it grows within you, developing a capacity and resembles being an enlightened being that you would imagine Buddha or Jesus being who were just in love and open and accepting the whole time. This is where people are really helpful. People are really kind and friendly. They want to give you a helping hand. They want to tell you there is so much more to life than you imagine that there is. So they want to be able to help you. And this is where you are moving into. When you cross over into your vibration and talk to other dimensions, you have interspecies communication. It's when you're able to see across different light spectrums. So you start seeing into the invisible realms. You start seeing dragons, for example, spirit guides. You start seeing totem animals. But let's just stick with dragons, shall we? <clears throat> it's being able to feel across the different vibrational spectrums as well. So you can feel into what other people, you can feel into the things around you, you can feel into animals and you can feel into the non-physical. You know when you're in the presence of non-physical energy, when you have other beings around you. Your senses are alert and intuition is feeding you and guiding you. To know bliss is to enter into a state beyond love. 
and I've been given an image of it to describe to you as the words are just too basic. The descriptive language of the us humans is just too Neanderthal, I'm often being told. And there is like, there's no sensations in the language, it's just words. But what the dragons want you to do is it's a descriptive language that allows you to feel into what you're being told. So it's the gift that is given to your body through the frequency and vibration of the state of being pure bliss. Imagine the state that is beyond love where everything is just perfectly working out for you. The world is working in your favour. And you feel that everything is so much brighter, more colourful. There is intense details and hues and blends of colour. There is an easier sense of what's around you. There's more flow and a rolling feeling of flow when the world works for you and attracts what you just thought about. You are really being used as a channel and a conduit for life force energy. As you are connected from head to toe, safely tethered to the heavens and safely tethered to earth. Your visions are not an earthly vision, but that you can experience and see into another dimensional being. You see into, through and around things. Across the light spectrum, you hear across the wider bandwidth of notes and tones as you now see with new eyes and hear with new ears. All of your senses are heightened in this utopic state and this makes you totally happy and feel whole, complete and compassionate. You are in the world as you know it, but not of the world as you knew it, if that makes sense. You have become in love with life running through you and being otherworldly. This state of bliss you can attribute to enlightened or awakened masters. I often have conversations with my clients and they say they prefer being in the realms of um, mm, the masters, the dragons. They prefer that. They would rather spend more time out in the ether than they would here on earth. Um, so if this is you, if this is talking to you, if this is a life that you really fancy having, moving from 3D and how to operate in 5D, this is what the dragons are awakening you to, being able to operate in that particular way. So you are manifesting, you are creating your new reality. You know exactly how things work, you know how you feel, you can tap into other people's energy. This is what they call ascended. 5d or the utopic utopia utopia is the end she comes after the rainbow she's there you go under the rainbow you come out the other side and you're just oh my god way to live this is just amazing everything's beautiful you feel in love with everything and that's just the absolute pleasure of being in that state now we're going to pick number three so let's see what card picks out number three. Don't forget this is about your identity. The cosmic consciousness message this week is all about your identity. Let's see who flew out there. Oh, Raphael. Sowing seeds. Earthly success in sowing seeds. He is card number 24. Sowing seeds. So let's have a little read of what card number 24, what Raphael wants to tell us. Meet Raphael, absolutely meet Raphael. Raphael is a very stable, he's really got his heart and his mind in the right place, Raphael. He's one of the oldest dragons I know. He is massive and he's like your favourite professor. He is silver grey and so. He has so much to teach you. But here are his key messages. So if you pick card number three, be aware that there's something in here, there's an action in here that you will need to be moving on with in order to ascend and live the life that you came here to live. So Raphael, let's call in your energy, shall we?
It's so tempting to view your life on earth in terms of success and failure. To pin a badge of pride on those finances accumulated and the rewards directly received for a specific activity. Sometimes on its own it is to sow the seed. Sometimes it's not meant to go anywhere right now, right away. There is a tendency to believe that maybe you, your desire or your projects or products are not compelling enough. You feel the pressure build up and expect to be rewarded for all the time, effort and hard work you have done. But because the seed is sown, it is now anyone's personal choice from their free will and from their soul as to whether they move forwards towards you or not. Here is an opportunity to investigate your underlying beliefs that lie behind what earthly success looks and feels like for you. Maybe you don't believe that you can do what it takes to please everybody and to take them across your skills, your products. Or is this where you really need to be able to ask your soul and your spirit if this is the right project for you, if this is the right product for you to work with, or if this certain person is the best for you to be in relationship with. Feel if there is a soul to soul connection with your clients in your relationships who you do coaching with. If that soul wants what you are offering or if you want what that other soul is offering, maybe there's a bigger purpose for you to follow and you're just playing small, not actually realizing your destiny for this lifetime. Knowing this, we can make it happen if the others are ready, if not, then you will have sown a fantastic seed for them and others will come. That is the soul work in and of itself. That is the greatest success. That is soul work with no expectation for you to direct or reward. Hmm. Some seeds need to germinate for a while. Some needs to ferment. However, the seed is best grown. Seeds are seasonal. Seeds need to be grown at a certain time. Others need to lay dormant for a while. Then they can come forth in the right season for them. It is not their right season, then they will not be able to grow up strong or fully use the techniques that you have and that you want to share. So sowing the seed is very, very valuable. Reading the seed, I would say even more, is more and more valuable. Sometimes there is a misconception that there is no value to sowing seeds, casting your net wide, but we want you to know that there is great, great value. You, as earthly being, as human, out of your current experiences, only put value on money. But there is karmic value in there too, and we will always support you for what you do to have enough of what you need when you are following your path and following your dreams. Of that there is no doubt. Unfortunately humanity has been taught to expect the quick and direct one plus one is two. This linear reasoning and reward. There seems to have to be a huge great big lump sum of money arriving so that you can feel safe. And that way is the old way of living. Whereas rather than allowing money to come in like the breath when it is needed supporting your immediate needs and trusting you are in flow with the source of all creation and aligned. Consider this, you don't take all your air in for one day all at one time. It comes to you throughout the day. You don't eat all your nutrition in one meal for the month. You require intervals to officially digest and absorb and grow. Just know that when money comes in, it is meant for you to further your projects, campaigns, and invest in your bigger picture and soul work. You are here for a bigger reason than to continue in the old ways where generations have been doing the same things in the same ways over and over ad infinitum. Now you get to know and trust that your needs are fulfilled and you can create your own world and deliver your soul work to sow seeds and see what else is possibly available to create out of practical magic. 
things that have never been created before. We talk about new inventions, new novels, new films, new methods, new healing, new ways of loving and living. This is a new paradigm. Welcome to the new world. Wow, thank you, Raphael. <laughs> so I'm gonna start reading card number four in a minute. First of all, I'm just gonna let that one flip out of the deck here. Again, talking about your identity, talking about what you know inspired action you need to take in this next week to take on all these cosmic messages that are coming through. Huh? Clearly a card, Raphael again. <laughs> all right, card number 19, Raphael. You like talking to us today, don't you? So this is his card today. The evidence you required is right here. So that's just going to feed on after the card that he was just talking to you about sowing seeds. When we're in business, sometimes that's some of the hardest things to do, isn't it? Just to let things go and let the seeds ripen as and when they, they're ready. We all seem to want to push. The evidence you required is here. So let me just call in Raphael again. And come back to us, Raphael, and read to us from your particular energy. The pulse you feel inside you to change, to play a new game, is really strong right now. You feel compelled to turn things up, turn things around, and yet you require the evidence to know you're on the right path. You feel you can do this only if you have the evidence that it will work, which is when you are living with the feeling of when your desire has to be delivered. Maybe your desire is a life of ease or a feeling of 100% alive, experiencing life and everything that life has to offer. When in the other way around, if you are able to feel your dream as already here and being experienced as you live your day, this would just feel lighter and easier and everything is working out really well, really, really well. Everything that you can think will happen can happen, does happen, and you have to still keep sending the feeling for the evidence to arrive. Again, and it is an expansive feeling, a deeply satisfied feeling. It's warm and comfortable and safe and adventurous, exciting, fun, spontaneous, and like leaping without a safety net and trusting that there is that feeling inside your body that there are no limits to the human body, that you will land safely. That the edges of the body are very fine and light and that you have access to everything you want because you are constantly creating and filtering your own experience. This requires the mastery of thought, the mastery of your mind the mastery of your overthinking, analysing, looking for evidence mind. This requires a level of trust from the personality to allow the spirit and soul to think in a way that is limitless. It is light and it is exuberant, looking for spontaneity, looking for excitement and a life of pleasant surprises and trusting then that everything will be okay. You are in a time on the planet when you're being asked to play a bigger game, bigger than ever before. And believe that before there is evidence in solid form that your desire is still being birthed. So this is faith. To play and to play at believing is to change your character, to change into a role that believes that you are something other than you are. You humans like to say fake it until you make it. It's an expression of humours like to use, but it's more than that. It's really stepping into a character, a character that believes, truly believes, that there is a bigger picture to play. This is your lifestyle. This is your new human. And then you can mould and create just the way you want to. When you play a different character, it's easier for you to believe that these things can happen that you can change your destiny. You can see it in your mind's eye. You can imagine it. Anything you can imagine and you're feeling into and you're wording and you're articulating can and will happen. You change your own destiny. 
you change your own situations. You are only you get to change your internal story. There is tremendous value in playing with time and activities like changing your story. By changing your story and stepping into another being and acting as a different character so that you can feel the frequency of being a different person who believes, who truly and utterly believes. Then you start seeing and nothing and noting the evidence and you get so much proof and notice as you build up and record of success and evidence to your new game and now you can start playing at another level altogether because you've made note, you've started focusing on the things that are showing you you're moving in the right direction. You're focused on the outcome that you want. You just keep playing, experiencing and feeling what it feels like to be that different character. Living as you want to live. Pretending it, imagining it, changing the vibration of you so that things can start changing around you. You are creating in the imaginational realm and bringing it down to be with you here on Earth. The very air around you changes when you play in this way. All the cards here, all the messages here are really, truly speaking to your heart and your dragon soul. Because you have been here before, you have come back down to Earth to live a different experience, have a different experience and know and love that this is a planet of all creation, that you get to play at being the creator and not settling for what you are told is all you can achieve. So this is where we play the manifestation game. This is where we play at creating your new reality. So all of this, all of these cards, all of these messages, they give you actions to take as to how you can move forwards, like playing a different character, changing your frequency, changing your state, writing things out, making an inventory of every single thing that makes your heart soar. So um, these were the dragon cards for this week. Thank you very much for being here. If you're on replay, let me know what number card you had. And everybody who's already said that they wanted a card, I am going to be tagging you so that you can get and listen to this recording as well and that you can start taking the action steps so that you are moving forward in your week in your goals and in your dreams have a wonderful wonderful week of manifesting